Pete, you've written a new book, your first book called In the Arena. First of all, why'd you write it? I, it was almost a, a guttural inspiration to, feel, to to give a message to my three boys, you know, Gunner, Boone, and Rex, who are you know I'm raising in America today, and I want to give an exceptional America too. I want to inspire them. I want to motivate them. I want to educate them, and then I want to educate everybody else as best I can to really remind, not educate, just remind them that America is an amazing country. It's an exceptional nation, which comes with it. The duties as citizens to perpetuate this amazing country. We're in a tough time right now, as you know, and I, and I feel like it, it thankfully, is, is well-timed to, to, to re, re, reinvigorate, rejuvenate people to believe in this country. And well, to and do to give them something to do. I That's think right. so many people feel hopeless. Like, oh, they watch the news every day, and they're like, this is what we've got. What do we do about it? And what's great about your book is you say, this is about average citizens being good citizens. And people should know this this book in the arena came from the Teddy Roosevelt speech. Yep. It's where you pull it. Yep. But it's not about Teddy Roosevelt. Nope. You just take his language to kind of call the action. That's ex- what do you mean by good citizens? Good citizens, first you look inward. Do you, are you willing to work hard and hold down a living or take care of your family, large patriotic families, character, faith, the bedrock things of, of what it means to be a good individual who then turns around and serves the community. It's not just about voting or protesting or all the things we see on cable news. It's, it's, it's who we are and what we believe and how we give to, the, to this great nation. And if more of us are doing that. It's, it's how we check government. Yeah. Small citizens small citizens mean big government. Big government, small government can be checked by citizens who are engaged at the local community or nationally. And it, you don't have to carry a rifle. You know, I served in Iraq and Afghanistan. I tell stories about that in the book. But th- you can contribute any way, any way where you are uh, by just, by having the courage of your convictions to enter the arena. It's easy to quit. <laughs> There's a lot of critics. You're gonna fail. I mean, I've learned only through failing in my life, but it's getting up and responding and saying, I'm going to stay in this arena because I know the cause is right and true. You also talk about that that's our role here in this country, but that we do have the role of being good patriots abroad. And as people kind of look around the world, and they say, gosh, I, I know America has to play a part, yeah. but we don't want to be everywhere. We don't want to be the world's policeman. What do you say about we that? We don't need to be everywhere in the world's policeman, but if not America, then who? Who's going to lead the free world? And I believe we should be America's sheriff, standing proud with a shiny gold badge, maybe speak softly and carry a big stick. But remember that when America acts, we are a force for good to advance our security and interest. And if we're not going to do it, there's no one else left to do it. In fact, the Brits handed us the keys to the free world after World (laughs) War II, right? Their younger brother. If we were to take a knee and and say we're done, who do we hand those keys to? The Islamists, the communist Chinese who are expanding their spheres of influence, the Russians, international institutions, there are no other good options, which is why I say if the 21st century is not an American century, it won't be a free century. History is not over. Trends decline, ascend and decline. And, you know, Teddy Roosevelt gave that speech in France uh, in 1910. Hmm. You watch the French Republic and what it is today, what happens when you gut your military to pay for your welfare state. They're now riding the the waves of history and with a demographic surge. And Teddy talked a lot about demographic in his his speech as well. So I just think Roosevelt's speech was kind of un-PC before there even was PC. (laughs) And we need to hear that right now. We we want to hear that. Yeah, and you make the case, again, the book's not about Teddy Roosevelt, who kind of lost his way (laughs) after the speech. But, But nonetheless, what he was speaking to at that time really is kind of a call to arms for people for people now. A reminder to that French elite audience that was already starting to sort of be, believe itself to be bigger than the gritty and difficult virtues of citizenship, of, of being tough, rub some dirt on it, <laughs> you know, go get a job, be proud, don't apologize, don't wear a, don't wear a you know, we don't need to wear bike helmets and every, you know, we don't need to turn our men into women and our women into men, right? There's there's some things that we need to be willing to stand up for and be proud of uh, and, 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 and not not apologize.